Hi everybody, my name is Dawn and welcome to What's the Stitch, a weekly web series where I answer all of your burning questions about sewing, costuming, and cosplay. Today I've decided to start switching things up a little bit once more. We're going to actually work on some projects today. I know, it's a miracle. I tried to have something for you a little bit earlier, but unfortunately my first attempt at footage with one of my other projects did not turn didn't turn out nearly as well as I was hoping it would, and I decided not to subject you to the flaming pile of mess that was that initial attempt. So hopefully this one has come out a little bit better. I've decided to take advantage of some of the newly found downtime that I have and work on something that I have always wanted to do, and that is an 1860s ball gown. This is something of my own design based on some fashion plates at the time. It's going to have some adaptations that are just for my own stylistic preferences. I bought the fabric about a year and a half ago. It was just dying to be made into something Victorian, but I hadn't decided on the design until now. But since I've got the time and since I found some other things that I thought would work really, really well with it and finally figured out what I wanted to do with it, I decided to finally, finally make that dream dress. Now this video is going to be done in two parts. This first video is going to cover my construction of the skirt. And then I will have another video coming up later for the construction of the bodice. All right, everyone, let's get started. Now, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is to mark and cut out my skirt. I'm going to be using Simplicity 1728 as the base of my skirt. This one is an old favorite. I find it's got a lot of volume and it's just a personal favorite of mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pinning the panels here. My center one, of course, is done on a fold, which you will see. And then I'm going to trace around them on the wrong side of my fabric with the crayon. I'm going to repeat that for my other pieces, pin, trace, and cut all of them out. Turns out I had a lot more of this fabric than I had planned and I was really in the mood to make a gigantic skirt so what I ended up doing is actually cutting out two extra skirt panels and adding those to the back to give myself some extra volume. After that, it was time to pin and sew them together. Now, something you may notice here is that I've actually sewn these with the wrong sides together instead of the right. And there's a couple reasons why I did this. The first one is that I really felt like 
doing a French seam would be something very nice to do with this skirt and I'll explain what that is in a moment. Uh, the skirt is heavy enough that I didn't need to line it so that was a nice advantage for me. The other reason I decided to do the French seam aside from I just wanted to was that my serger has been on the fritz and unfortunately the way things are right now I've not been able to go in and get anyone to take a look at it. So a French seam is a nice way to handle that. The way a French seam works is that you start by pinning your pieces wrong sides together so that the frayed edge is on the outside and you want to sew this with a small seam. I did it at about half an inch. Once that was done, I folded the pieces so they were right sides together and pinned outside of where I had those rough edges forming a casing around them. This I did at about a 5 8 inch seam. And then I sewed and pressed on those lines as well, trapping the rough edges inside. Now it's time to get this skirt pleated. Now this can take a while, and one thing that I found is really helpful, especially when it comes to getting standard and equal size pleats, is to use a fork. If you put the fabric between the tines, give it a little twist, you can tug it to exactly the same length every single time and your pleats will turn out beautifully. Another thing that I'm going to suggest is to try to use two pins at the top of each of your pleats. It just helps it stay in place better when you're sewing. I know it looks like I only have one pin in each pleat up here, but since they're overlapping, it ends up being two pins per pleat and like I said it helps it stay in place way way better. I ended up changing the direction of the pleats halfway through so what I did is from everything from the side seam to the front was pleated towards the front and everything from the side seam to the back was pleated towards the back. Now I get to play with the overlay. I've had this lace in my stash for probably about four years now and I keep just changing my mind on what I'm going to make with it, but I thought that it would look really, really gorgeous as an overlay for this kind of skirt. So the first thing that I did is to match the bottom of my lace overlay to the bottom of the skirt. Now this created way too much and too much drape and a lot more than I wanted. So what it did is I took that amount and then I cut it in half and then even actually decreased it further from there. Then I pinned the skirt in place and did an approximation of the gather so I could see if I liked the volume of the pleating that I had planned. From there, it was simple enough to sew up the back seam, leaving about six inches down the back to allow me to get in and out of it.
Then I ran two lines of loose gathering stitches along the top so I could tighten it to fit the waistband of my skirt. And now we gather. The way I like to do this is to pin the ends at the back of the waistband and then pin at center front and at the side seams so I can make sure that I have an even gathering along the entire waistband. Making the waistband itself is pretty simple as well. Um, I tend to like thinner ones, so what I like to do is take my meter stick and on the wrong side of the fabric, trace the outside to approximately my waist measurements with another couple of inches added so I have a tab to fasten the back with. I usually do this about two and a half meter sticks wide, I find it makes a perfectly serviceable waistband. Some of you may prefer to do something a little wider, then all you have to do is keep tracing that meter stick and you're gonna have more width. Once I had that cut out, I wanted to interline it, so I got myself uh, some leftover cotton sheeting from another project, laid my waistband over top, and then just cut out along that same line. I know I've said this in a couple other videos, but I do like to use secondhand sheeting a lot for my interlining. It's usually quite good quality fabric, and it's way cheaper than having to find cotton broadcloth. Then I basted the two pieces together. With that done, it was time to attach the waistband. I sewed about half an inch from each of the narrow edges, clipping the corners to form the basic casing. And then I marked where I wanted my actual waist measurement to be. And of course that, like I said, left a few centimeters at the end so I could actually close it. I also then pinned in the middle of where my waistband would be so I knew where my center front would be and attach the skirt accordingly. Once the waistband was sewed on, it was time to attach the other side. I turned under my seam allowance and pinned it into place, and then I used a basting stitch to sew it closed. Now, mysteriously, my footage of hemming this beast disappeared sometime in my production. 
I like to use an invisible hem for this. So what I do is I roll over the bottom hem, usually about the width of my pinky, pin that in place and press it. And then I work on the hem. So what you do with that is you take your needle and thread. And what you want to do is catch a few threads just on your rolled hem part and then one thread if possible on the actual skirt and keep going around the entire skirt alternating. This gives you a very nice hem without it being actually visible on the outside. And now we can finish off the overskirt. Now I mostly eyeballed this, but luckily with the stripes in place that made it really easy to get a nice even distribution for my pleats. I used two pins to keep it in place just because I was using fairly wide pleats. They ended up being about six inches. So I wanted to make sure that I could keep those steady and in place while I sewed. This I sewed by hand as well. I thought the effect would be a little softer than if I did it by machine. And it only took a few minutes and I have to say I actually really like hand sewing a lot of the time. I feel like it's really relaxing and also feels like kind of a nice tradition that I'm part of. Alright, and with that my skirt is done. I hope you enjoyed working with me on this little project. I hope to have some more videos and uh, some actual outside shots done of that sometime soon. Hopefully when it stops raining, because unfortunately that's what I'm looking at this week. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button below, and if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, please ring that bell and hit that subscribe button. If you have any further questions about sewing, costuming, cosplay, any questions at all about the construction of this dress, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer whatever questions that you may have. Alright everyone, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye!